Scott Diamond. Um, so, uh, you guys have been here a few days and you've kind of seen there's uh, a lot of foil, uh, a lot of cutting going on. There's a lot of, lot of different processes for doing it. Some are going to be for real high volume, uh, really expensive equipment that makes really, really sexy, nice product. Uh, that's that's great, but that's not for everybody. Uh, you can see more digital, or short run, quick turn type products. Uh, and that's, that's where we come in. Uh, so the, the, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I could just yell. Yeah, you probably can yell. Yeah. Um, so the first thing we're going to show is the matrix uh, foiling laminator. Uh, this is first and foremost a single-sided laminator. Um, they were originally developed about 10 or 12 years ago, primarily for the book publishing industry, for doing book covers, uh, for doing packaging type applications. Uh, they've been adapted to run the the toner-based foil process, something we call sleeking. Uh, it's been around for 30 plus years. It originally was out there as more of a, a hobby and craft type uh, market. As digital printing progressed and became uh, more standard, uh, the technology advanced with the machinery and the foils, and it's actually become an acceptable commercial production method for a foil. Our consistency has gotten a lot better over the years. The speed has improved. So it's really, it's really a growing area. Uh, foil manufacturers have started paying attention to it, actually making foils specifically for owner application. Uh, this machine also is available in a two-sided version for laminating. That two-sided version machine will also be single-sided and foil for foil as well. Uh, the machine also is available uh, as a hand-fed unit or a modular auto feeder that can be added later. Um, so you can buy it without the feeder. As your volumes pick up, you can add the feed. Um, so actually, what I want to do is just kind of kind of show you how the machine works. Uh, we've got the auto feeder on there. This machine uses what's called a burst. So uh, the way it works is we, we size our film to be slightly narrower than our than our sheet that we're laminating. Then the sheets are underlapped. The following sheet is underlapped over the lead sheet, so there's no exposed film. There's a little perforator on the side that's going to perforate the sheet. The last set of rollers in the machine are called burst rollers. They're going to fire down and they're going to snap the sheets. The way that works, if you think of your little bag of M&M's when you're going to open it, uh, there's a little nick in, the, in there. You just tear it and it opens right up. We're doing the same thing. We're putting a little nick in the side of the fill. Because it's bonded to the sheet, you just get a nice, nice clean tear. So I'm actually just going to run the machine and let you see it. Uh, it's pretty simple to operate. Uh, if you're running the auto feeder, basically all you do is hit start. It's going to self-level and feed in the first sheet. As soon as the first sheet is fed, there's a stop gate there so the tank goes in the laminator. And that's why when you're hand feeding, you know how far to push it in. Then I just hit start with the laminator. And it's going to run. And then you just tear the first roll of wire, and the sheet should just snap out. So if you want to pass this around, here's a sheet that's just freshly laminated with soft touch laminate. Uh, the nice thing about having the auto feeder is you, you, can, you can set it up and let it run on your own. You could be across the room doing something else. You learn by listening to the sounds the machine makes that everything's running great. I mean, I can be across the room doing something else, and if I, I can hear the, the sheet being fed in, I can hear the gate coming down to take it, I can hear the burster firing and even the sheet dropping into the tray. If I don't hear one of those steps, I know something's going wrong, and I can come back to the machine. So the, the feeder is a nice option. Um, you know, if you don't want to tie up some hand feeding. You're going to be running at a rate of about, uh, about 400 12 by 18 sheets an hour. Um, you know, give or take, whether you're laminating or foiling. Uh, you know, the variables that come into play is uh, what your print engine is. Um, some print engines like Tonica Minolta and Xerox can be a little bit more difficult to laminate. So you may have to run a little bit slower and hotter. Uh, also, how much coverage you have, like you know, something like that that we're just handing around doesn't have a lot of coverage on it, so you can run it a little faster. If I'm running a solid book cover that's solid black, I probably have to run a little bit slower. 
Uh, if I'm running soft touch laminate versus gloss laminate. Soft touch laminate um, takes a little bit more heat and time to uh, cure into the paper. So you might have to run that a little slower. So like I said, I, I like to refer to laminating as more of a, uh, an art form than a science. So there's, a, there's some variables in there, uh, but once you understand them and you know what your production is, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The machine's you know, nice and easy to run. Um, you know, a couple of cost things to take in mind. You're looking at uh, to do single-sided gloss laminate on a 12 by 18 sheet uh, using a good digital adhesive. You're probably looking at about eight, nine cents a side. Um, doing soft touch laminate, you're probably about 13 cents a side per sheet. And foiling, you're looking at about 20, 21 cents. Uh, and that's whether you put a dot on the page or you flood the page, because you're basically using 12 by 18 inches of foil no matter what you do. Uh, there are some ways to work around that. We've had people that will rewind the foil and reuse it if they've got like a dot in one corner. Um, some people have slid rolls of foil down and you know, like two or three inch rolls. Um, but I usually tell most people when you're, when you're pricing it out and you're estimating, assume you're using the full 12 by 18 inches on a 12 by 18 inch sheet. Uh, so actually I'm going to hand this mic over to Quentin for a second. Uh, does anyone have any questions about laminating? All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how you switch the machine now over to foil. Um, it's really simple, it takes probably less than a minute. So I'm gonna give this to Quentin and do that. So actually, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Right now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip my laminating film. So it's, it's just laying on the hot roller. I'm gonna tape that just so it doesn't get hot and roll in there. So now I'm going to take, we, do, we have an offset roller. We put this in front of our heated roller. The reason we do that is over the last five years or so, we've determined that foil does not like to be preheated. Uh, there's wax in the release, and if you preheat it, you don't get as crisp a release. You can't do as fine when you're boiling. Um, so we put a little offset roller that's in front of the heated roller to keep the foil from preheating. Laminate's the opposite. You want it to dwell on that hot roller as long as possible. You want to wet out that adhesive. So I'm just going to take this. I literally just take it and I stick it to my laminate that was on there. So the nice thing when you are laminating, you always want to have a sheet in there, uh, especially single-sided, because you know, it'll wrap up all over the place. That laminate's really sticky. The foil doesn't get sticky, which is a nice thing. So I can. Uh, once the laminate's through, I can literally just run the foil through, and it's not going to uh, it's not going to stick to the roller, it's stick to the machine. And all I want to do first is just get the foil coming through. Now you heard that burster fire. I want to go into my setup. I'm going to turn the burster off because we don't want that to fire anymore. So there's some exit rollers in here. I just move them out to the side so they're out of the way. The little perp wheel that's in there, I just raise it up. I can now pull my foil through, cut it off the sheet. So again, we have an extra idler bar back here because we want to pull, we don't want the foil to come off at a shallow angle, weak angle. We want it to come back at a 180 degree angle. Again, that helps you get a really nice crisp release. I've just converted the machine from laminate to foil. But it doesn't take a long time. There's no other settings I have to change. Pressure, we're gonna keep about the same. So, uh, okay. the machine operates the same way. I'm gonna hit start. Drop my rollers back down. And hit run. So what you'll see is, wherever we, wherever we printed, Black toner. When the sheet comes out, wherever there was toner, you're now going to see foil. So do the better one of these. Not bad.
So here is basically you want to pass some rounds before and after. So you can see the machine will just continue to run on its own. If, the, if you run out of sheet so the feeder stops, the laminator automatically stops. So there's a so there's a couple of uh, a couple of different methods for doing the foil. The most the most basic and simple is is what you're looking at here. It's just print black toner directly onto stock, um, and then run it through and foil it. That's what, you know we would call the, the two-step process: print and foil. Um, this is good for you know uh, I have a, someone who does matchbox covers, and they literally just print and foil them. There's no there's no four color printing. There's no text. There's nothing else. Um, the next one would be a three-step process. You would print, foil, and then maybe go back and print either some four color or some variable data, or like a wedding invitation where you might print a border around the outside and then print the text on the inside that you didn't want foil. Uh, that would be a, a three-step process. The, the most popular and the most attractive is what we call the four-step process. And if you look at the business card I gave you or the little door hanger, uh, this is a four-step process. So we, we kind of reverse it here. We print the four color background. We laminate it with the soft touch laminate that we just had on here. Then we take that sheet and we go back and we overprint in black toner on top of the soft touch. And then we run it through with foil to get, to get your foil embellishment. The reason we have to do that is we have to create a barrier between the background and the foil layer because the, the foil is gonna stick to all toner. It's going to stick to color toner, even though we only use black when we're foiling, um, it will stick to the color as well. The, the main reason we use black, and we use a grayscale black, not a CMYK black, uh, when you print in any CMYK mode, your printer lays down forensic dots in yellow toner. Um, you can't see them with the naked eye, but when you run it through with the foil, uh, the foil will pick up all the dots and you'll see, you'll see the pattern of the forensic dots on the, on the finished product. Um, someone have a question? So the match sheet size we can run, or the match sheet width we can run in this machine. Um, this machine can handle up to 14 inches of laminating film. With the auto feeder, we can go 29 inches. Without the auto feeder, we can go 40, I think it's 42 inches. We have a, a machine that's a size up from this that will go to 20 inches of film. Um, same length prescription, so it'll do 29 inches with an auto feeder, it'll do 42 inches without an auto feeder. This machine, the, what we call the 370, is perfect for the digital market because it will do up to a 14 by 20 sheet, um, and it's, it's a lot more cost effective than the wider machine. That machine is really geared for uh, either the offset press user that's doing a half size press sheet, or uh, someone who's got a digital that can do a you know a B2 at you know 20 by 26 inches. Um, so I like, what I like to tell people the limitations of this system. Um, it's one, it's the creativity of your designer. Two, it's the skill level of your your print engineer, press operator, because they're going to be the ones that have to worry about um, reprinting over the soft touch, making sure it regis registers well. Because the registration becomes a factor of you know, your, your printing. You, know, you don't have to worry about registering. Uh, it's, it, you're just reprinting it. And wherever you print, the foil is going to register to the print. So your registration is during printing. Uh, what I will tell people is in your design process, don't design something that, like, don't try and put a circle inside of circle <laughs> in the background. Because you'll never get it to register on a full sheet. You may get part of it to register. But you'll never, you want to have it so, like with this, if this foiled image, if it floated any direction a millimeter or a couple of dots, nobody would know. It wouldn't make a difference. And then the third limitation, or it would be uh, labor. You know, how much labor you're willing to put into something, or uh, more important, how much labor you can charge for. Um, you know, you're doing a four step process to do this. If you were doing thousands of sheets, that's going to be a lot of running of the machine. More so if you wanted to put multiple colors of foil, every time you want to add a color of foil, it's another pass through the printer and another pass through another color because uh, you have to do them one at a time. Uh, 
So it really comes down to that. The sweet spot is that anywhere that short run, anywhere from 25 sheets to 1,000 sheets even. Um, you get to a point where at some point it becomes more cost effective to actually pay for a die and have something done. You know, unless it's variable data and you can't. Um, we had someone who did uh, some invitation things for a big trade show and they had to do 10,000, but it was people's names were flooded. So they really couldn't do, do a dot. So they just ran a lot of sheets. You know, they printed offset, then they did variable, the foil stuff, digitally. So, you know, once the finished product comes out of here, again, it comes down to the, the creativity of your designer, we're not tied to a square shape or a circle shape or a predetermined shape. We come over to the, the digital die cutters which you know, they're really serving serving the same market. It's all about product that you used to always have to have a die to do. Now you can do digitally, so there's no setup, there's no downtime. So that's why these two machines seem to go hand in hand really well. So I'm gonna let Quentin uh, operate and show you the, the digital die cutter. Same sheet size. Uh, no, actually this will do, so this die cutter, we have three models. Um, this one will do up to 15 by 23 inches of cutting area. Um, the next step up will do 20 by 29, and then there's a larger one that'll actually do 35 by 47 inch. Um, and uh, like I said, Quentin can tell you about the tools that are in it, the media that you can cut, um, and, and stuff like that. So what we have here is a versatile auto feed di uh, digital die cutter. On the gantry side here, we've got suckers underneath, and this gantry moves back. It's going to drop down, pick up our first sheet advance it onto our belt. Inside our gantry head here, we've got four operating tools. Through cut, kiss cut, and creasing. He's also got a EOT, electric oscillator. What the EOT allows you to do is to cut uh, thicker materials more dense, uh, corrugated, PVC, foam core, core blast. So you're not limited to having to have a big flatbed cutter. If you've got the means to sheet down or buy pre-cut sheets, you could do all these things on this cutter. There's a CCD camera. This is going to read our registration marks, which are just a six millimeter filled black circle. You're gonna preload your cut file into the software. There you will assign tools, assign depths to your blades, um, and lay out your file. And then from there, you just find your very first registration mark, and the cutter will do the rest going around, laying it out on the table, submitting it to the cut server and begin processing. What's unique about the digital die cutters is you do not have to make the die like Scott was saying. We could have variable data on our sheet. We could have one circle, a square, a triangle, a door hanger, um, a tag, all these things laid up on one sheet. It's all programmed into your PDF cut file. So it's just gonna follow the vector paths that you've set up on the operating or the design side. Underneath the mat is a vacuum powered suction belt. So there's a honeycomb board. What this does is it's gonna hold down our material nice and flush as it's cutting, so our sheets don't move. All this is controllable through the software. You don't have to come underneath the machine, pull off sides to turn on different zones, um, or on a touch screen, go in, activate zones. You can simply just from the software, turn it on, get going. There is QR code plugin. So if you wanted to, you could lay out a QR code. The camera will read the QR code. You have a hot folder with all your cut files. It will pull that folder, or pull that file from the folder into the software, assign the tools, and just keep repeating. So you could do one-ups, you know, lay 10 sheets of different things on there. As long as that QR code and your registration marks are in the same locations, you determine in the software where the first mark is and relative to that uh, QR code so the software knows to automatically keep doing that workflow. So we could have theoretically a door hanger on this first one, uh, and then we could do an envelope on the second one. And then you could have a chloroplast sheet underneath and do a yard sign, a happy birthday sign. So three different workflows on one sheet, or on one uh, feeder. 
Any questions? Yeah. So substrates, uh, card stocks, chloroplasts, foam pores, anything up to six millimeters in thickness. So this one is the smallest model, 15 by 23 is your max cut size. The second model is a 20 by 29 inch workspace. The third model um, is a 35 by 47. What separates that model from the rest is that one actually has five tooling. So it, adds, it also adds a UCT, universal cut tool, that will do 10 millimeters in thickness. Also on that model, you could lay two sheets side by side. It'll feed it out, read the registration marks, and process both sheets, feed the next one out. So you're cutting your production in half. So you can leave a hanging tag in here so everything just doesn't fall out, or you can have it all fall out. As you can see, the cut quality is pretty pristine. So there's... Oh, no, I was just going to say, there's, you can also do labels, stickers, decals. There's a kiss cut tool, so you could process four different toolings on one sheet. So if you wanted to do a kiss cut and a through cut on the same sheet, you could do that. Um, also with the creasing wheel, you could take the creasing wheel out, put in a perforation wheel, so if you wanted to do a tear cut. There's also a V-cut, so if you want to do like an angled blade at 90 degrees, like a trench cut for folding boxes, corrugated, that's also available. On the biggest model, the 35 by 47, there's a roll feed attachment, so if you want to do roll to sheet processing up to a 30 inch wide roll, the conveyor system will pull that roll sheet all the way out, process, sheet it, advance, Any questions? Uh, speed is dependent upon the complexity of your design. Um, so something like this right now is running about 35 seconds per sheet. Um, if you're doing this corrugated box back here, it ran about a minute five, minute 10. Um, the machine's not built for speed. It's built for the automated processing of going back, picking up, bringing out. Built for the short run industry, so you're gonna load four, 500 sheets up here. This isn't gonna do 10,000 sheets you know, an hour. So you, you can do prototype packaging on here or prototype cuts. Uh, you don't even have to print. There's a red dot on there. You can kind of see it. Uh, you can do a start point with that red dot and throw on 